So first of all, everybody, welcome and happy new year. I do want to note that we have a new member of the authority who has joined us today. We have Mayor, um, Cap Mayor Kathleen Reed, who is with us. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? I mean, you know to many, but would you like to introduce yourself just formally? Uh, well, formally, I was elected on November 8th as the um, first mayor of the city of Fairfax to wear pearls instead of a tie uh, and uh, my swearing in. Um, I have been a resident of Fairfax City for 22 years, and I do know a lot of people here because I've been very active in the Northern Virginia region and in the Commonwealth of Virginia on many, many advocacy efforts. Well, welcome and congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. It's a good group. Yeah. And I thank everyone for attending the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority annual organizational meeting, which will be immediately followed by our business meeting. We kindly ask that remote participants, if you can hear me all right, you may not remain on mute until you are called uh, to provide comments. And before we get started, I'm going to ask if Mr. Davis, if you would do a roll call for me, please. Yes, ma'am. Vice, excuse me, Vice Chair Snyder. Here. Chairman McKay. Chair Wheeler. Here. Board Chair Crystal. Here. Mayor Wilson. Here. Mayor Davis Younger. Here. Mayor Rischel. Here. Mayor Reed. Here. Senator Boisco. Here. Supervisor Herity. Here. Mr. Bedell. Here. Ms. Hines. Here. Mr. Cole. Mayor Wood. Present. Mr. Lynch. Here. Uh, Chair. Randall, we do have a quorum. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Um, we invite the public to provide us in the TA with feedback on what regional um, focuses you'd like to see in 2023. And we also like you all to tell us if you can think about it, how we should go around the go about best, best, um, best tackling the congestion issue. Um, of course, we want to do these through multimodal approaches. And so that's always our focus. We have had a lot of people submit comments this time by in writing. So if you submitted your comments in writing, uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, we will, we do look at the uh, comments to come in, written comments to come in. We will have, we have people here tonight who will be participating both um, in, per in person and virtually via Zoom. Um, if you register to provide comments in person, we're going to have you speak first, and then we will go for people who are on Zoom. Each person will have three minutes to speak. When you hear the timer or, or see the alarm, please wrap up your comments quickly. Um, after those in, comment, in person have done, we will go to the people who are on Zoom. I think we just have three people who are here, not just three, but I say that differently. Thank you to the three people who came to, to be as, with us in person. I have three. Do we have anyone in the room that have signed up that we know of? No? Okay, we have Mr. Bill Few, Dr. Gregory, and Fred Hussein from the city of Alexandria, South Chile, and the town of Dumfries to um, speak. So we're going to begin with you three gentlemen. Mr. Few, if you'd like to come forward. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Chair Randall and board members. My name is Bill Pugh. I'm a senior policy fellow with the Coalition for Smarter Growth. I'm also a Northern Virginia <coughs> resident. And I, we thank you for the opportunity to provide comments on the, uh, the new year and, and what we hope MBTA will focus on. First, what can we learn from 2022? Traffic fatalities in Northern Virginia, unfortunately, continue to grow and we're almost 50% higher than in 2019. In Fairfax alone, there were 30 pedestrians that were killed. Greenhouse gas emissions in this country continue to go up and we know from many studies that electric vehicles won't be enough to bring our transportation emissions to those <coughs> levels. The average cost of a new car is $50,000 and gas prices will continue to fluctuate. But there were some bright spots. The Silver Line opened in Loudoun County. MBTA funded some great projects like the Richmond Highway BRT. There were multimodal projects that you all funded in Falls Church and Herndon, and a new entrance to the Boston Metro. 
Promising new approaches were put forward, NBTA's technology strategic plan and the proposed regional BRT network. But 2030 is approaching fast. We have to meet critical goals for building most of our housing close to walkable activity centers and transit, and for rapidly lowering our climate pollution by 2030. This is very critical. We've, we've seen what's in the news, California, other parts of the world, the record heat in Europe and here in the US in the last few weeks. And we can't get there under the status quo approach. Future generations of Northern Virginians are counting on you. And in 2023, this is your opportunity, and we ask you to seize it. Fund NPTA's proposed bus rapid transit network study that staff will be presenting to you soon. Coordinate with NBTC and WMATA on their important regional bus study. This will be very critical for Northern Virginia and the region. Rethink the projects that you will submit this year for the next six year program. And think of the core values safety, equity, sustainability in your project submission. And likewise, for TPB's Visualize 2050 process, TPB is requiring that NBTA members and other TPB agencies review and reprioritize their projects for consistency with the goals that have been adopted here in the region. The goals for a less, goals for a more affordable, sustainable, accessible, and less car dependent region. And lastly, um, you can implement the technology strategic plan that provides smarter ways to address congestion. So thank you for your time and look forward to working with you all in 2023. Thank you, Ms. Pugh. And you know, I uh, when last she spoke, I, I I called you. You put me on a, on a, a call with quite a few people from your organization. It was very, very helpful. And I really did appreciate that very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Gregory is not with us, and so I'm going to call on Fred to say if he's here. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, Chairman Miranda. Uh, good to meet you, uh, members of the board. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak, and I wish you a happy new year to, uh, this year. Um, uh, I'm here to discuss about the uh, bi directional express link on I 95. I came to this podium uh, three years ago. Uh, I still remember that, you know, advocating for VDOT to, to really uh, look into studying uh, to provide bi directional express lanes on I 95. And I'm glad there's some traction involved. And, uh, 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 WRC TV reporter Andrew Tusk reported that uh, Chairman McKay and uh, Chairwoman Real uh, writing a letter to Secretary of Transportation on this issue. I want to thank you for, for raising that profile here. Um, now, I, I think uh, it's, it's really odd to see I 95 to have reversible express lanes. We have 495 uh, reversible express lanes, we have 66 uh, uh, now reverse uh, bi directional express lanes, sorry, I 495. Um, uh, bi directional express lanes and 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 we I'm surprised that it's we're, we're still having reversible express lanes on I 95. I mean, I mean, I was surprised that it was not included in the transaction 2045 plan. I mean, this is a really urgent matter because there's some justifications to having this there. Um, I'm frustrated myself, like most of us, that you know traffic is smoothly going one direction, and I'm frustrated on the weekends there. Uh, to have this uh, happen to me, I mean, to go anywhere in DC. So, um, you know, uh, if, if this comes to fruition, I ask that to continue that bi directional express lanes from, from Springfield to Fredericksburg, not terminating around Dumfries, because uh, it'd be more reliable there. Um, and I, I do see a justification that there is motorist demand along the eastern seaboard. I know Georgia has, has been included in the Easy Pass network. So that'll bring more ridership on there, and especially Florida and Central Florida, I think. So that's and, um, that's also part of it. So there'll be a demand for kind of moving faster through the to the DC metro area, and it will benefit the Omni Line uh, uh, bus service along on uh, I ninety five. You know, kind of bring some more reliable service for, for those people who cannot afford to have uh, um, can't afford to taking a, a other reliable transit. So that that would improve that. Um, and not only it'll, it'll uh, provide express, uh, you know, the, the bi-directional express things, it'll complement uh, 
the, the proposed uh, rail expansion a lot of DC Richmond and also uh, BRT Express is what or Metro, whatever it comes first. I know it's a, there's a huge price tag to that. So um, I ask that uh, to spend the construction of Opus Boulevard, um, find common ground with the government to really, um, really get this moving in the Secretary of Transportation and uh, continue the pursuit of dialogue of, of rail and, and also um, and also the uh, the rail service of VRA to uh, from DC to Richmond. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, Do we have any other speakers who uh, want to speak in person? Okay. We're going to go on then. Um, we're going to go on to our virtual speakers. When Abigail or McKenzie from our, from the MBTA staff call your name, please unmute your device by hitting the microphone icon on your screen. I, we're all used to those by now. Please remain on mute until your name is called. You will have three minutes to speak and the timer will be shown on your screen to <coughs> provide your comments. When you are finished speaking, please remute your microphone by clicking, of course, the same icon. Um, if you do not place your microphone on mute, we will go on and go ahead and do that so that we don't have any background noise. If you have trouble um, muting, unmuting, or any technical issues, please uh, use the chat box and message us. Raise your hand icon. We're going to try to assist you man manually. After providing your uh, public comment, you can um, log off and continue to watch the meeting on our YouTube channel. A recording of our meeting um, will be uh, and always are posted. And I'm going to, now going to ask Abigail, would she um, call our remote speakers? Sounds great. Thanks, Chair Randall. Thank you, Good evening, everyone. We have two virtual speakers signed up to speak tonight and provide comments. First, we'll have Alan Munchnik, followed by Mark Scheffler. Alan, you can go ahead and unmute your mic, please. Oh, good evening. Um, I'm Alan Muchnick. I live in the city of Manassas, and I help lead several active transportation groups. 2022 was a busy year for the authority. While the processes for updating transaction and the six-year program were badly flawed, I appreciate that the outcomes were better than many had feared. I urge the authority to vote 2023 to reevaluate its approach to transportation project development in our region, to better align its uh, processes and outcomes with the core values of equity, sustainability, and safety, and the goal of developing an integrated multimodal transportation system that enhances the quality of life, strengthens the economy, and builds um, resilience. A transportation program that in the outer suburbs is heavily focused on expanding fast multi-lane arterials is neither equitable nor sustainable and only worsens safety and access for vulnerable road users and non-motorists. MBTA funding, which is devoid of motor vehicle user fees, has not effectively addressed our region's growing traffic violence problem. The authority should establish a task force this year to reevaluate its fundamental policies and procedures, starting with the statutory emphasis on reducing traffic congestion. The recent transaction planning process found that even if our region uh, could obtain $75 billion to complete every listed project over the next 23 years, traffic congestion overall would be essentially unchanged. The authority should evaluate more cost-effective, equitable, sustainable, and safer alternatives to regional tra uh, transportation planning and investment and then recommend those changes to the General Assembly. A simpler yet more, uh, much needed reform would evaluate, would require advertised public hearings before a relevant governing body endorses any project for MVTA related funding, including from the CMAC and RSTP programs. Currently such funding uh, requests are often uh, developed behind closed doors and simply placed on a consent agenda. Requiring additional public hearings before uh, advertised public hearings before governing body endorsement could alter the mix of the submitted projects and or expand or modify the scope of, in light of the uh, public comment. The authority needs to develop and adopt a com robust complete streets policy to ensure that all MBTA funded projects provide adequate access and safety for vulnerable road users. Early public involvement before projects are submitted for funding is related to this need to ensure that project scopes and funding allocations will properly accommodate vulnerable road users. Thank you for this uh, public comment opportunity and for uh, considering my recommendations. Thank you. 
We have one more speaker, correct? Yes, that's okay. right. Thanks, Alan. Now we'll move on to Mark Shefflin. Mark, you can please unmute your mic. Good evening, uh, Mark Scheifler, Prince William County. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. To meet regional, state, and federal greenhouse gas emission objectives and goals, a structural change in transportation planning and investment needs to occur. In addition to approved vehicle emission standards and investing in electric vehicles infrastructure, vehicle miles traveled, or VMT, for single occupancy vehicles as a whole needs to decrease even as Northern Virginia's population grows. At a basic level, this means we need to stop expanding unmanaged roadway lane miles. This means the recently adopted transaction plan would need a major modification. Any government funding for highway expansion is one less dollar going to meet these urgent climate goals in the transportation sector. We need to change the paradigm that congestion is reduced, not by adding unmanaged roadway supply to the system, but by reducing single occupancy vehicle travel demand. This will require reducing car dependency by developing near high, speed, high capacity transit, repurposing roadway space for transit and non motorized users, and reforming parking requirements and local service standards, especially in outer jurisdictions. One roadway widening project that I would support that is currently being studied is modifying the I 95 express lanes to a bi directional configuration. Now, this is not included in the $74 billion transaction list. According to the transaction documents, MVTA supports more general purpose widening of the existing 95 roadway that VDOT has indicated would not, be, would not be a very good investment. But this only makes sense if jurisdictions simultaneously take advantage of the opportunity to transform the currently high speed deadly arterial adjacent Route 1 corridor in Fairfax and Prince William counties. I applaud Arlington County staff for recommending a 25 mile an hour design speed for their section of Route 1 to the National Landing Area. I would hope it can be a model along with dedicated transit lanes in the Route 1 quarter for all the other jurisdictions from Pentagon City to Dumfries to adopt. These type of regional initiatives should be the focus for MBTA this coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other virtual speakers? Oh, Randall, that completes um, the virtual comment for this evening. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Abigail. I appreciate your help. I appreciate all the staff's help uh, this evening. Um, and I appreciate everyone who provided comments both virtually in person. And as, as I said, we have a lot of comments that came in today that were came in this time that were written comments. Um, we do listen to your feedback. We do make phone calls. We do set up meetings and talk. Your feedback is appreciated and valuable. And as somebody earlier said, some of the things that we have been working on have actually been adjusted or changed due to the feedback that we have received. Um, so thank you. Um, we're going to remind you that uh, you can log off and go into the YouTube channel to watch the rest of the meeting. And we are now going to transition to the authority meeting. I don't think we have to take row again, but has anyone come in since we? Chairman McKay. McKay has joined us. Whoa. So we're I'm going to call the order the um, um the full authority meeting for January twelfth, two thousand twenty three. Um, first thing I would ask is, has everyone looked at your minutes from the last meeting? Obviously, uh, Mayor Reed, you, you, have, you, you were not part of those minutes, but otherwise, has everyone looked at their minutes? And if so, Madam Chair, move approval. Second. Approval moved, moved, moved and seconded by Ms. Crystal. Discussion on the motion? Seeing that all the papers say aye. 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 Opposed? And abstain. We have one abstention from Ms. Reed, otherwise, the motion will pass unanimously. Mm -hmm. Uh, presentation, Ms. Backman, um, you have the annual report presentation. Woo I will say in advance that there's a picture on here where I <laughs> I'm speaking and 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 I um yeah we're gonna talk next time. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. So each of you should have 
at your place a copy of the 2022 annual report. And before I get into the annual report, I will um, ask you to take copies back with you to share with, with your colleagues. So the theme for this year's annual report was momentum builders in a region connected. And it really speaks to our accomplishments and invested investments, building momentum to create a more equitable, sustainable, and safer transportation network. And I do want to note, for the first time ever, you adopted and updated your six-year program and the long-range transportation plan in the same year. So if you open the annual, yes, and that was a, a heavy, a heavy load, but we got it done and it was done well. When you open your annual report, as always, we have the yeah, oil out map. <laughs> and we like to include this map because this map represents the 20 projects that were funded as part of your six-year program update. It also notes the multimodal solutions that you are investing in. And, on, and the map is double-sided. So on one side, you'll see the project location, the title, the requested amount, and the approved amount. And then if you look at the last column, you will see the primary mode. Primary is key in that because a lot of these projects have several modes attached to them. And then we have the Nova Gateway listed on the map. If you go to thenovagateway.org, you can pull up information about any project that the authority is advancing. To date, that is 122 projects totaling $3.1 billion. We are always trying to improve the Nova Gateway. So in addition to showing funds that we have programmed on projects, you can see the other funding on the projects as well. And on this side of the map, on the flip side, you see the location of the project. And that gets to, and I want to um, acknowledge Ellen Posner, who always used to love the map, because she's like geographic balance and modal distribution. She's like, Mom, yeah, yeah, this is great. I love the map. So, and it gets to geographic balance and modal distribution. So transaction, which we also accomplish. And if you turn to page, I'm trying to turn, um, page three, talking about our primary responsibilities, we accomplished both in calendar year 2022, but you adopted a vision statement, goals and performance measures for the transaction update. Additionally, we had a perception survey in the winter of 2021. We had work sessions, stakeholder meetings, and we really wanted to get an idea of what the region's needs are. And if you will turn the page, and, and I will know Chair Randall's letter and she didn't like one of the pictures, but we do have, <laughs> we do know that 1.3 million commute trips or 76% of the commuting trips in our area, they start in NOVA and they will remain in NOVA. And it's important when you look at the $75 billion that the cost, the projects we have in transaction are 424. And we couple this with the increase in population by 23%, and the increase in employment by 33% by year 2045. We also had robust public engagement. We had two public hearings in calendar year 2022. We had public comment periods in calendar year 2022. So we really wanted to hear from the public and citizens in the community as we did the long range plan update in addition to the six year program. Now, and I hope I didn't get too far ahead of myself in turning these pages, this year something that's included in this transaction is the NBTA testimonials. In, let me grab my page, I'm trying to get to my page. In the middle on pages, I guess it starts, you'll see page 12, and then you flip it open are the testimonials from you as the authority members. And we ask each of you to provide a testimonial featuring you as the members, 
and how the authority is connecting the region and how we're really making a difference. Now, we did ask your approval before we put these testimonials in. So if you don't remember, we have the record, but these are um, the testimonials that we did see from you. And we wanted to speak to that because you do have a robust task in making funding decisions and planning and programming decisions on these regional revenues. And we wanted to have include testimonials to get from each of you what you think these decisions mean, what it means to be a part of the authority and make these decisions. Additionally, when we talk about transaction, and if you close your testimonial page, you'll be on page 17, and we talk about transaction, we have the new- A couple more minutes. I know. Give us a few more minutes to look at ourselves, and then we'll be, we'll be ready for you. So. <laughs> um, we have, I never said that. If you turn to page 18, we have what's new in this transaction. We try to leverage technology. As was noted earlier, we have the transportation technology strategic plan. So we wanted to improve some of the efficiency and decarbonization of our transportation system and leverage some of the technology that we have in the TTSP and put that in the transaction update. Additionally, this transaction includes a regional bus rapid transit uh, system, specifically BRT and high capacity transit that will bridge the gap between the region's rail network and many of the local and commuter bus services that are provided throughout Northern Virginia. Turning the page, and I'm not going to walk through everything, but I did want to walk through some key highlights. The regional impacts of MBTA's investment. If you could turn to page 21, if you're not already there, we speak to the regional revenues, which is the 70%, and the local distribution fund, which is the 30%. With this year's six-year program adoption, as I noted earlier, the authority is funding 122 congestion reducing multimodal projects that are total more than 3.1 billion in regional revenue. But we also included the 30% local distribution funds that are expended or committed. That total $614.7 million. Additionally, to date, we've distributed $880 million in 30% revenues. As you all are aware, we do have to do the certification. All nine localities have met the certification requirements, are meeting the certification requirements. So we've distributed $880 million. And that was by the time we got this information to the printer. It's gone up a little bit. And what that means is more rail, bus, BRT, bike pad, technology, interchanges, roadway projects, just the massive projects that we have invested in this region to keep the region moving, to build upon the momentum that you already have set in place. We do have graphically the 30% revenue. And if you go to page 22, you'll see each locality and the amount that they, the funds expended or committed for their 30% project. And then on page 23, you can see what that means and what the breakout is by mode. Lastly, pages 24, 25, 26, speaks to the groundbreaking ribbon cuttings and a branding event we had the opportunity to co-host this year. This past year, in 2022, we had 12 milestone events. Eight were groundbreaking. Now, you can read the captions to see where the events were. I hope you were there. Um, we try to make sure we have something all around the region. And then we had three ribbon cuttings. But we had one brand launch for the Richmond Highway BRT that is called The One. And if I can say once again, and I know you've heard me say this before, no other project has more money or more funding on it than the Richmond Highway BRT project, $330 million to date. 
turning the page in conclusion. In addition to the milestone events, we had or participated in 30 events during calendar year 2022. We tried to stay busy even though we had products that we had to deliver internally and externally for you, but then making sure that we were collaborating with our uh, regional, federal, and local partners. So again, I say thank you. This is your annual report. Please take copies. Please, please, if you don't, we will drop them off to your locality. <laughs> so please help us out and, and take copies. And Madam Chair, that concludes my report on the 2022 annual report or concludes my presentation. Inspector, thank you. And if anyone has ever gone to the General Assembly when we have our lobbying day, Ms. Beckman's Banner White impression <laughs> and showing this. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. So this is very, very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. You know, we don't, we don't realize how busy we are until we get to the end of the year and do a look back. And we've done so much this year. Ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings and so much work that we've done. So um, thank you to everyone and a special thank you to staff. Um, we're going to do the um, economic impact analysis. We're going to, um, that's a presentation, it's not a voting um, issue. We'll, uh, we can come to the table. We're ready when you are. If I put you put yourself up, you put yourself up. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Chair Randall. Thank you. Um, the handout for this is also in your annual report in the front pocket. Um, we thought it would be beneficial. We actually designed it to, to be easily transportable around the General Assembly, uh, <laughs> leaving offices, leaving your own offices. Um, you know, but it just kind of, I think it feels better than a normal eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Uh, prior to Sri uh, delving into the report itself, I thought it would be helpful to have some uh, context and history of how we, we've been doing these reports. Um, this is the third economic analysis that the authority has undertaken. We are now in a cycle of doing one of these every time there's a two-year update to the secure program. Uh, so that's kind of just the habit. We will capture the 30% uh, money as well as obviously the 70% revenue funds to do that. Um, we're also excited and, and appreciative of the authority's investment in modeling because uh, we are planning on making some expansions to this report as that modeling capability comes online. A lot of it was just approved with the 2023 budget, so it kind of missed the synchronization this time around, but I think you'll see a lot more uh, pleasing statistics and, and information in, in upcoming reports. Um, the report, the analysis is actually conducted by a company called uh, Chamora Economics and Analytics. Many of you may be familiar with them. They're, um, they do a lot of work for VDOT. They do a lot of work for other state agencies. They also do a lot of work for uh, the feds, and they're pretty well known around the Commonwealth. Um, Chamora won this contract in a competitive bidding process. Uh, the, the, the emphasis for those competitive bids was we wanted an economic analysis that was using professionally recognized, nationally professionally recognized methodologies. And we wanted to make sure it was reliable, the results were reliable, and that they were repeatable. That somebody could take this analysis, basically run the same thing, and come up with the same result as a, as a form of transparency to make sure that the, the numbers were independently derived. Um, Tremora, in addition to the work obviously they do for us, you know, part of their portfolio and their resume is they do a, a, a much more complicated um, uh, economic analyses, again, across the Commonwealth. And so I think they're, they're well positioned to uh, expand as we um, move forward with additional funding programs. There is a 10 page, at least a 10 page, we're wrapping it up now. A detailed analysis that will be posted on the website. Um, don't worry, it's not here. We're not going to go through it. Uh, but Sri is going to go over uh, the high the high points uh, contained in the uh, handout. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Chair Randall and members of the authority. Uh, this analysis looks at the total funding approval of the, of the authority has made so far. That's from fiscal year 2014 when we started having the funds uh, through fiscal year 2027. That's the last 
uh, six year program funding you approved uh, in July. And the analysis, some of the analysis includes the both 70% regional funds and the 30% local revenue funds. Uh, so you get the full picture of the NVDS revenues. Uh, the local revenue, the 70% regional revenue, we know we, we do the process here, so we have all the data. For the 30%, we worked with your staff as part of collecting data for the JCT report, uh, Joint Commission on Transportation Accountability report that we have to submit every year. So we collected that data from your staff and included that into this analysis. So to start with, a total allocation, that's that together, it's a about 4.6 billion investment. That's what we are talking about. That brings up the first number here, 7.1 billion of economic impact. So 4.6 billion investment is expected to bring in 7.1 billion uh, in economic impact. That's about 150% return on that investment. It also uh, results in an addition of about 42,000 new jobs in the region. Well, mostly in the region, I'd say mostly because 90% of this stays in Northern Virginia or the greater Washington metro area. Uh, some of it goes to the rest of the Commonwealth in some even far away places from our region. The, the, these impacts are of anything that got mobilized or built in the region, whatever is done here. You, if you don't remember, we can remind you that you have approved 50 bus purchases for various bus agencies in our region. Unfortunately, we don't build the buses in Virginia. So the impact of those 50 bus purchases are happening somewhere else, like Ohio or other places. So our impact of the investment that you make is not only impacting this region, not only Commonwealth, but the rest of the country too. Some of these projects are still getting implemented. We talked about uh, Richmond Highway BRT just now. It's still being implemented. It will take another five, six years. Maybe some of the other projects that you recently approved may take more. We, have, as of the date, as of now, the data we have shows all these projects will be implemented by about 2034. So the impact we are talking about is stretched across those years. Now, looking at the, some of the other data we have here, uh, specifically, this is regarding the 70% regional funds. That's about 3.1 billion allocation so far. That allows you all, the jurisdictions and agencies who got that funding, to leverage another 3 billion in committed funding. So, NVDS 3.1 billion is allowing the region to build projects worth 6 billion or more. So our impact is not just 3.1, it's much more than that. And Mike mentioned about the model, uh, in-house modeling that we can do more next time, but currently we, with the help of consultants, we do model that based analysis for six-year program. Those, those analysis so far shows that all the projects together, if we look at it, and we've stretched it out to 2035, which, I looked at 35 because all the projects will be online by 2034. So over the over this 20, fiscal year 2014 through fiscal year 2034, these projects will come online at different periods, different time frames, and they will start accruing benefits of those projects. So we looked at one particular factor here, that's the time uh, travel time saved. So the projects are expected to uh, move people faster, so you don't have to sit in traffic. That's about 400 million hours cumulative of all the projects by 2035. Then we looked at the census data and the other uh, reputed data, including TPP's model analysis, to come up with the conservative estimates for value of time. And we looked at about $15 per hour, which is less than the median income in census. But you may argue that some people and less than that, some, and more than that. We came up with the median number of $15. You combine those two numbers, you get to see that that's about $6 billion saved in value of time because of these projects that you not sit in traffic. That itself is about 190% return on your investments. There is a fiscal impact study also we did. It's not in this, this graphic. 
uh, but these investments are bringing jobs here, other act activities here, state gets income tax from those. Local jurisdiction, you all get BP oil tax. I will let Mike talk about, explain what that is, business, professional, and occupation license tax. So both state and jurisdictions are getting some tax benefit also out of this. And their ads comes out about 100 million for the state and 5 million for the jurisdictions. So in conclusion, your investment so far is expected to bring 7.1 billion in economic impact, 42,000 plus jobs, more than 3 billion in external funds leverage, more than 6 billion saved in value of time, and those additional taxes. So NVTS revenues are spent on projects that are not only going to reduce congestion and achieve the goals of mobility, accessibility, and sustainability, but it will also have huge economic benefits add labor, add tax revenues, strengthen the regional economy and competitiveness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for very much. Questions? Mm. Yes. Oh, could yeah. we have a link? I said it was on the website. She said she's asking for a link. Link for the, the 10 pages. Yeah. The 10 pages, yeah. the full report. Yeah. We, we are finalizing that. Okay. To, to borrow Keith's, it just was expression beautifying the report <laughs> so, as soon as that is done we will upload and we'll start to i don't know if i have a question as much as a a discussion for for now but also a discussion with some of the people who who came in and spoke tonight in fact definitely discussion because you know there is nobody in this room i mean if you look at this group of elected elect officials there's nobody in this room who, who was not Uber committed to the environment and to the, and to understand what greenhouse gases are and believe in, in global climate change. I mean, this is this is a room that that you're not going to have any issues with. At the same time, I, I, I two things we hear that are juxtaposed. We hear that if we build roads, you get ingestion induce congestion, more traffic will come. But you know, we do multimodal, but we do build roads. And so how how do we square we're getting more congestion because we build roads with we're going to have 400 million hours of time of travel time saved by 2035? Because both those things can't be true. I mean, really, both those things can't be true. That can't all be, the time saved can't all be rail and bus. Some of that time saved has to be time not sitting in traffic as well. And so, you know, I take these matters seriously when the, when, when, when the different organizations that I truly believe on and appreciate come and speak, I take that seriously. I take the, the issues of, of, you know, cars sitting on the roads that, that are just, you know, spilling out poison seriously. But if we are reducing that much travel time while we are building roads as well as other modes of transportation, then those things just those two things cannot exist in the same world. They just don't make sense to me in the same world. I don't know if that's an answer we can have right now. Maybe that's more of a question a discussion for us to have, which I'm always always up for that. But I do think it's something that we should think about because we always hear if you build roads, is this going to bring traffic? And and if you are Chair Wheeler, Chair Randall, uh, Mayor Wood. Not having roads is not an option if you live in Lovettsville, if you live in Dumfries, if you live in, you know, it's, it's just not the same option. And so, you know, there are so many things that Ms. Backman has done over the past two years and the staff has done to speak to the environmental concerns, the entire technology, um, the entire technology thrust is for that concern. But, but I'm, not, I'm also going to be real honest. We're not going to act like the MBTA is going to stop building roads because we're not. Because we're, we're not. So I, I, you know, I'd like to kind of understand this stuff as much as possible, so that when I, when I, when I make, when I take votes here and on my board, I want to just make statements. I know what I'm talking about, and I know that, you know, we're doing the best we can to move people. Um, um, get them where they have to go, get them home to see their daughter be a tulip at the plate, mm -hmm. right? 
while, while also doing the most that we can to reduce those greenhouse gases. And what we hear from, from, from committed, um, honest, concerned citizens, and these numbers don't jive. So that's a discussion I would like to have. So let's fix all the problems right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's going to be so. Okay. But just, just to bring it back, so the model-based analysis, what it does is that looks like the land use plans you have for the next 20 years. So what this analysis is based on the land use plans and zoning that you have in plan for all these years up to the future. So whatever it analysis is based on that. The induced demand, that's the term uh, we keep hearing, some of that is captured here because if the transportation network gets better on certain aspects, then people might travel which they were not traveling before. Those kind of things are captured already. If that brings in more people to the region, then that means more travel happening. Because of that transportation facility, that is something that model cannot really capture. So that part is not captured, but that is captured through your land use plan. You are not, you are adding in concentrated development, you are adding it in certain places where it is not going to create that kind of traffic. So that, that's the assumption I behind that it. Does make sense. Yeah, and then we also use all the analysis is based on the multi-model aspects of our funding, where some of the road projects are required to have a, a better transport, transit facility. For example, the uh, BRT project on Richmond Highway. Yeah. Without the widening in certain segments, you cannot have that full that the full, full benefit from that BRT. So it, it, in, in several, several places, we have to do this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good answers. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Mr. Bedell, yeah. sir, yes. Thank you, ma'am. I just did I hear that we're going to be able to have this um, with a link that we can post on. I'd like to put this on my LinkedIn. I think it's a great balanced approach, um, yes. particularly with your comments about we still need roads. And I think that's a while just still doing transit and the other things you're doing. So did I hear that correctly? Were we? It is coming. OK. The cool. link is coming. Yes, sir. Thank you. You heard that correctly. Thank you. Anybody else? The questions I see. Well, I was pointing out to him, but do we have any do we have any data on if we don't build roads, they won't come? Is there any study out there that says if you don't build roads, they won't come? Um, I, I don't I'm mean, sorry to ask you a hard question. No, no, no. So you get back to me That's later, a bad question. I mean, there are people that say if you stop then building schools. People stop having so, kids. That, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> you answered the question. That works. You answered the question. So what? The question is: Do you want to have condition, or do you want to have no economic activity going on in the region? Okay. Thank you. I can absolutely guarantee you, people will have kids. <laughs> 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 Let's just go put that out there. So we're going to make that record right now. And I will absolutely guarantee you. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. The action items the appointment of chair and vice chair. So, first action item, I'm going to hand this to the nominating committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, let me first of all thank the, uh, the nominating committee of uh, um, Chair Wheeler and board member Crystal for, uh, for their tireless service on this, on this committee. The committee um, had a number of meetings. Um, we conducted a full national search um, for the leadership of the MBTA for the next year. Um, we actually found nobody else wanted to talk. That's, that's, how we, that's how we ended up concluding the search. Um, it, was, it was exhausting. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, we have been, uh, as uh, Ms. Bagman talked about, the significant amount of work that uh, we have done over the last year. And I think that has uh, happened because we've had uh, great leadership um, on the staff level and on the board level. And so um, we uh, do nominate and recommend uh, that uh, Phyllis Randall, I don't know if any of you met her. Take my pictures. Don't worry, if you don't like the picture, just turn the page. There'll be another, there'll be another much better one. Um, so, 
and then on the next page, the next page <laughs> um, they're uh, Phyllis Randall of Loudoun County and, uh, and David Snyder of uh, Falls Church um, to be our chair and vice chair. Uh, and they have agreed to serve for another year. And so as the chair of the nominating committee on behalf of my uh, colleagues, Chair Wheeler, Board Member Crystal, uh, we, uh, we move their election as uh, chair and vice chair for the next year. Okay. Thank you. Is there a discussion on that motion? I really enjoy being in the PA chair. I, um, it's, it's, it's actually been my pleasure. And now that I know that you made an exhaustive national search, <laughs> I'm really honored. No, this is a great committee. We do good work and, um, you know, we are from all over the entire region and we, we're, we're very, very collegial. We have a good time with the work we're doing. The work we're doing changes lives. Getting people home changes their lives. And, and, and it's, these are quality of life issues. So I appreciate it. Thank you. No, it's just a, I'm incredibly honored. And this is an amazing group. I mean, you, you look at the performance and it's here. Um, too often we talk about stories of failure and when things don't work. This is an example where things work. And we want to talk more about that. So thank you all very much. Thank you. All in favor to say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I'm going to abstain on the vote. Two, <laughs> two abstentions on the vote. Thank you. We are now going to oh thank you. <laughs> 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 We're now going to um, nominate the uh, uh, appoint the, the town member, um, and I am. It says Ms. Beckman, but I'm happy to make that motion, Ms. Beckman. Unless you want to say something before that motion is made. Uh, the only thing I would like to note, Chair Randall, is that we did query all of the five mayors with a population of 3,500 or more. Two are actually serving on the PCAC, and they said they would like to continue that work um, in lieu of serving on the authority. One is the new mayor. So, like, yeah, not at this time, and not to say Mayor Wood by default, because he's been a great member, but I did want the authority to note that we query um, all five mayors who are mayors of towns with a population of 3,500 and more. All right, well, then I'm with the authority appointment of Derek Wood, mayor of the town of Dumfries, as the town member of the North Virginia Transportation Authority for the calendar year 2023. Second. Motion made and second. The discussion on the motion. I will say, um, Mr. Wood, Mayor, you do a fantastic job, and I am a little baffled all the time as to why other mayors don't step up. Because I would tell you, your your service on MBTA has certainly benefited your camp, your town, and uh, that's what that's what you're you're here for. It, it's it's a it's a non-voting position, but you are a full member, and certainly add so much to the conversation and what we do here. So thank you. And you make really good food. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you that's why we said put you back here. <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was that one, they didn't give us any food. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's why we searched. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 That motion will pass unanimously. We're going to look at our schedule, which is item number nine. Um, Ms. Beckman, before we I make a motion for the schedule, for, the, for, for people who are in COG, if my memory serves me, and it may not, I know that COG's um, annual meeting moved up this year, because normally COG's meeting comes behind the, the National Association of Counties meeting, and they go. This year, it comes before it. So, um, we can we can move this and that's this is fine, but we we may have to go back if anyone check the COG schedule because that would take out of this room Mr. McKay, Ms. Breeler, myself, um, uh, Mayor Mayor Wilson, and so you you have no quorum, you have no quorum, and so let's 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 let me make a motion to move this as it is, and then if we have to come back and adjust it because of COG, I will we'll, we'll know that by the next meeting, okay? All right. Because yeah, COG's meeting, COG, it's not you all did nothing different. COG changed their their meeting. So, all right. <clears throat> I'm with the authority adoption of the meeting schedule for the calendar year 2023 as presented. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that again? COG or this or here. 
Yeah. Here is uh, July 13th. Yeah. And and I'm, I could be incorrect, but I won't check. So we'll move to that. We'll move this yeah, as it is. Yeah, the retreat. Yeah, the retreat. Yeah, that's the retreat. Yeah, sorry, the retreat. December launch. The retreat. That's what I was thinking. We moved this year. It's, it's it's always after NACO. And this year, when like when we were at Columbia over there, I realized that it's moved before NACO. So I, I, I if it's not this date, it's very close. So it's, yeah, the club retreat, which is in Cambridge, Cambridge. Yeah. Cambridge. Yeah. 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 Huh? Maybe we don't need it. Yeah. We might not, but but either way, we can come back and adjust if we need to. Because I, as I said, I mean, Jeff, if Mr. McKay and anyone leaves, we lose more. <laughs> Any one of us is not here when he's not here. We have no more calls. So um, so we'll check on that. So the motion on the floor. Is there a second to the motion? The choice. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Wheeler. Second. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Discussion on the motion? All good to say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion will pass unanimously. All right, uh, Ms. Blackman, we're going to talk about regional, uh, uh, regional circuit transportation projects, the RSTP funds. So, Madam Chair, the city of Alexandria is requesting a transfer of $500,000 from their transit analysis study project to the access to landmark project. They're making this request and transfer of RSTP funds because the transit analysis study project is actually complete. So uh, transferring this money to the access to landmark project will cover the project's funding deficit as a result of scope changes, allowing the project to move forward. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, I move the authority recommendation of the Commonwealth Transportation Board, the reallocation of RSTP funds for the city of Alexander. Motion is made to a second. Motion made and seconded by uh, Vice Chair Snyder. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, on tip to say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passed unanimously. The last action item was Prince William County with approval of a letter of endorsement for the American Infrastructure Sustainability and Equity Program application. Do you, do you want to see anything before we go to the motion? Okay, yes, Ms. Wheeler. I move the authority approval of the letter of endorsement for Prince William County's rebuilding American infrastructure and my sustainability and equity program application. Second. Okay. Motion's made. I'm going to give a second to Mayor David Younger. Uh, discussion on the motion. Seeing none, I'm going to say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion will pass unanimously. We have um, just really um, one major discussion item. Uh, the General Assembly has began their session as of yesterday. Ms. Boehner is um, in uh, Richmond. I told her we would when we come down, we we're gonna bring her food and water because she's not gonna be able to leave that room where she's at the entire time she's there. So Ms. Boehner, do you wanna, Ms. Tracy, are you there? Yeah, she was earlier. She was. She was. <laughs> I'm here, sorry. <laughs> water <in Maine. laughs> This happens when people in your office work late. Yeah, so yeah. anyway. Um, you want to go over some of the things that we talked about at the Governor's and Personnel Committee, um, Tracy, so this, just to bring everybody up to, uh, up to the same place. So sure. Um, I, I will start with uh, our safety discussion. I want to thank Board Member Crystal for already getting her staff to look at the pedestrian and um, walk traffic, supply, uh, traffic control, Senate Bill... Um, 1009. Uh, there's a there's there are a couple of bills that essentially say bicyclists, e-bikes, scooters are able to essentially act as pedestrians and follow the walk um, traffic control if they're going the same direction as the walk signal. Um, a discussion was where about the questions about is that really safe for the pedestrian. And so uh, uh, board member Crystal, thanks again for getting your staff to take a look at it. Um, we think that the was talking with her staff in between our meetings and it looks like there's already some concerns broadly about the bill, but I will continue, we'll all continue to do research on that. We talked about um, the administration's bill to one, address VRE's need to have um, one predictable amount of money, um, a percentage, three and a half percent being proposed from the Commonwealth Transportation Fund and having its uh, and having commuter rail 
performance metrics as opposed to them trying to fit in the box of regular bus transit. The same bill uh, also has um, some additional language re regarding WMATA, where they are codifying previous enactment clauses, which had NVTC submit their annual report about the performance of Metro that will con they continue. Um, they're asking for the Virginia member of the Metro board, general manager, to come and present the budget. Again, the I idea of having more transparency and more direct um, connection between CTB and Metro. And they're putting in code a current um, status quo of the state would fund no more than 50% of the local subsidy for operations and capital. Um, my understanding is the analysis of the of the historically what's been going on, it's been about 48%. So yes, in code, you are establishing a 50% cap, but it was giving the Commonwealth some certainty about Metro and Metro funding. Um, I, rec I recommend that we continue to follow the lead of BRE, NVTC, and WMATA about that bill. Um, the concept doesn't seem to be causing um, a lot of concern, but there, but there are going to be some work, I think, on some technical amendments to make sure everything is doing no harm, which is what Director DeBrule's goal is, and is going to be implemented in the way that it, it is intended to. Um, the other big matter was the transportation partnership. Wait, wait, so you can hold up on that one because that, that's I, I just okay. Sure, no problem. Any questions about that? So basically, you know, all that said was that you know Metro is there will be no no increase and no decrease to what goes to Metro right now from the state, and they will and the localities will always pay at least half, and they're putting that into law. They're, they're making that code versus kind of just practice right now. So they're never going to pay more, um, and 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 we're always going to pay probably a little over fifty percent of localities. And it's it's an issue because well that's the wrong word. DC and Maryland don't do their their metro compact funding like this. Theirs comes from their their state general budget or the district general budget, not from the jurisdictions. And so it's a little you know so you know the metro compact is DC. Maryland, and then all the jurisdictions in Virginia. So, so it's it's more complicated than for us. I was actually concerned that we might, you know, the the the, the Commonwealth might want to do less. Um, and I I obviously wish they would do more, but I'm, you know, it's kind of a push because they're not doing less, and so I'm, I'm I'm pleased about that. But this now goes into into code. Did I get that pretty much right, Tracy? That's correct, Madam Chair. All right. Uh, the other piece I'll, I'll, I'll bring you because I want to make sure we don't keep, stay too late is, um, as anticipated, there are a number of bills that uh, continue to address the issue of who, could, who can have a virtual meeting and how many virtual meetings they can have per year. There are a range of bills. Um, Delegate Bennett Parker's bill would leave it up to the public bodies to determine how many virtual meetings they could have per year. I think that's, Ch Chair Randall's correct, that's probably the easiest way to say that. There's another bill that would also just blow out and have no limits as long as you follow the reporting and notice and agreement um, requirements that are, that are in the code. So we're continuing to see those kind of bills. Um, my understanding is unlike the previous bills, which did pass, there doesn't seem to be the same level of agreement among all the stakeholders. Um, one of the press associations is, is a, might be opposing. So remains to be seen how far these bills can go this year. But it, it does seem that members of the General Assembly understand the flexibility that's needed. I think um, Ms. Bachman has noted that for NVTA, from a practical perspective, it really helps helps 
to be able to have virtual meetings for our advisory committees in particular, which are, I know many of us have talked about the idea of making it easier for anyone who wants to, to participate in some way in their government, particularly on advisory boards and commissions. So we'll, we'll stay tuned to how those move forward. Um, I don't think they're gonna be easy and we'll see how far, if at all, they're willing to change what they just adopted last year. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, Madam Chair, unless there's anything else you want me to, to, to bring up or if anyone has any questions. No, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything else. Does anybody have any questions? No? Mr. Chair, there was one other one that taught the use of transportation funds for development projects. And the, uh, do you want to explain that one, Tracy? Sure. Um, there are currently there has existed for some time what was what is called the Transportation Partnership Opportunity Fund. It was created um, as a way to have flexible funds that could be used for economic development projects and have a um, and take care of the transportation aspects of it. Um, Noel Dominguez from Fairfax County shared with me. Um, I forgot about the annual report, which looks over the just over the time that the program has been in place. The, the number of different types of projects, um, P3s that were, that have, that received money from this fund, but it's been fairly unused for the last few years. Governor Yunkin and, and his cabinet have been focused on getting agencies and secretaries to work closer and more effectively together on behalf of economic development. And one piece that they've really been focused on is that the is having the transportation discussions earlier in the economic development um, um, project discussions. I think in Amazon uh, Q2, HQ2, we saw a really great mix of projects were brought to that en endeavor. Again, projects that were long on the books here in our region and, and got advanced, but the but the ability to quickly find the money to pay for those projects was a bit messy um, and a little unwieldy. The, the idea for the TPOF, Transportation Partnership Opportunity Fund, is to have a pot of money that is flexible and that you can quickly go to. Um, as Secretary Miller said this morning, smart scale prioritization is a great program, but it doesn't move quickly. And when you're working with a prospect, you need to have quick money. What we did um, ask for me to do, and I think it's important, is for us to make sure the intent of the fund is as it currently is, which is projects across the Commonwealth of all modes, and it doesn't get tied specifically to the Business Ready Site program. So um, I've got a little more research to do and some additional conversations to have. It was pointed out by Ms. Hines that the way this uh, fund is going to be capitalized moving forward, if this bill um, is get, does get passed in its current form, is that each governor will be required to um, put in up to $100 million for, from each year of the biennium into the fund off the top from the Commonwealth Mass from the Commonwealth Transportation Fund. That does trickle down and and could will mean probably a little less money in all the other programs, including smart scale. Um, the fund cannot be capitalized more than three hundred million dollars at any one time. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be a trade-off, but the discussion we had at the committee was the acknowledgement that it 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 is of value to have money that can be easily programmed to support economic development um, prospects rather than having it come from um, more smart scale. Ms. Hines had a suggestion that I will put before someone in the administration to see if there's a way to instead or more use end of year unallocated balances from the trust fund instead of off the top at the front end. Yeah. Is that a fair way to say that? Ms. Hines, did I get that correct? You know, I would I would actually say unallocated general fund at the end of the year because okay. I'm rating the trust fund. 
think well, I, I, you know, one thing I, I read through in the history that Noel shared with me, um, the general fund rated this fund in uh, 2008 when they were, you know, during a, during a recession, when general funds go down, they rate everything. So it's kind of fungible. <laughs> That's a really good idea. And and truthfully, so Tracy, we'll be down there next Thursday. Yeah. Miss Hans, I you know, I might I might give you a call. That's a it's a it's a much better way to do that. Well, you can so, still get to the same amount of money, yeah. but why would you take the transportation funds, which are in short supply anyway, right. project right. and hold them aside for this? Possibility, right? Um, I mean, he already has the governor's fund, right? So this is just a new pot of money that lets no transportation money come out of the governor's fund. Correct? Yeah. So I, would, I just think it should be generous. So if we if we have if we want to put this um, this uh, Heinz amendment forward. <laughs> 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 how how would we how would we how would we go about, about, about having that conversation down there, Tracy? You would have the conversation with the sec. I would suggest having it with Secretary Miller and the patron of the bill. Um, this is a governor's initiative. It's part of his economic development package of uh, changes he wants to make. So certainly understanding why chose. The transportation fund versus previously TPOF was um, getting a certain percentage of general fund surplus. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot less than $100 million. So I think that's probably one reason, but I'm more than happy to ask the question and have them walk me through how they got to this as a recommendation versus another revenue source. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right, Ms. Bader, thank you very much. We will see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, everyone, we're going to go on to the executive, um, Chief Executive Officer report. Ms. Bader. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I will be brief just to remind you that our eighth annual Northern Virginia Transportation Roundtable will be held on Wednesday, March 22nd across the street at the Nova Association of Realtors. Does someone else have this room? And we are looking to have some authority members on the panel. As we have done traditionally, we have two different panels and it will be focused around our core values of equity, sustainability and, sustain and safety. And the event will address our theme of building momentum. Other thing I would like to note, we were featured, well, the Virginia Town and City Magazine, actually, and this is not us, it's Hampton Road, did a special or feature on the Transportation Authority. We are actually featured in this magazine on pages 20 and 21, speaking to some of the work that we've been able to accomplish and some of the things that are actually highlighted in your annual report. So it's, it's nice to have that, but they did do a feature on all of the transportation authorities. How many authorities are there now? Well, we have HR Tech, even though they're a Transportation Accountability Commission, they function as a transportation authority. You have us, you have the Central Virginia Transportation Authority as well. At this time, and Hampton Roads coming online. Sorry, they came online. Yeah, they came online. With, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. Right. And there's a there's a consortium, I guess, is what I would say along A1. Yeah, that has some of the same powers, um, capacity to choose projects, but they don't have a special staff. And, mm. So it's mm. really beat up staff. Mm. And I saw there's a bill for photos. Yes, there is. So, yeah, we are featured in that, and it's, you know, it's a big year for MBTA, some of our, our events for the, for the year. Okay, um, for my comments, I will say that I, uh, we need to reappoint some um, um, members to some of our committees, to the Governance and Personnel Committee, um, Board Chair Crystal and Chair Wheeler, um, if you are okay with that reappointment to that committee. 
to the Finance Committee, Mayor Richel, and if you are okay, still be remaining chair. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. McKay, you are, I put you down as vice chair. Did you not put you down as vice chair? I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> Usually how these things happen. <laughs> that was my share right now, sir. <laughs> and I will be I will be rounding out that committee. And then the planning program committee is uh Mayor Wilson and Mayor Richo. And and we will have to fill uh, Mayor Meyer's vacancy term. Um uh his term is 21 to 23. So if you are interested in serving on the planning program committee, please send me an email. <laughs> Our, our St. Monica wants you to tell you the whole scope of what the committee does so that we can make that appointment at the next um, meeting. Okay. Oh, Jeff wants to do that too? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I will know because we've had a whirlwind the past two years, we don't anticipate the planning and programming committee meeting. This year until late fall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's how it works around here. <laughs> um, all right. That's that is all I have. We look forward to a wonderful year. I do want to especially thank MBTA staff who does a very good. Very good job. So, staff, as always, thank you all very, very much. Um, for the good of the body, is there any other items to come before us? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Mm -hmm. Monica, do you remember what we're going to do for ourselves?